Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Al YouTube channel and it is time for another sheet load rewind. I hope you'll stick around to see what date we're rewinding to and see how I change it up a little bit. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. I hope that you have been enjoying this new sheet load rewind series where I rewind back to an old sheet load of cards and just revisit it. Sometimes we switch it up, sometimes we don't. Well, this month we are rewinding to August 2019. The sketch is here in front of me and originally this called for two pieces of pattern paper, four solid card stocks and three for the card bases. Well, today I'm going to show you how you can yield eight cards by adding really just one piece of cardstock for the card bases. Now, you will also notice later mine is a little bit different, but we'll go all over those more specifically later on in the video. Now, if after watching today's video, you want to download the August 2019 sheet load of cards, I will tell you at the end of this one how to do that. Also today, if you are a channel member, I am going to have a special file for you that is going to help you cut the shape here on the front. But don't worry, if you're not a channel member, I'm still going to show you how I made this template that I just always keep with my print. Let's go ahead and take a look at how the supplies are going to change. This is one of those sheet load of cards where each piece so the background piece was always the polka dots and this little banner was always kind of the leafy. Well today I'm going to show you how to still cut your two pieces of pattern paper to yield eight pieces from each that you can mix and match so your cards look a little bit different. Also for myself today, instead of cutting two pieces of cardstock into quarters to put on the front of my white card base. I just went ahead and got out four pieces of craft cardstock and cut those down for my card bases. So I won't have a piece of cardstock on the front of the card. I'm just using the color from the base itself. For your sentiments, this is a great one to use scraps for those. This does call for one sheet, but I will be getting out my white cardstock scrap box and using those for my sentiments. For the other piece of colored cardstock, this is for the mat on your little banner shape here. And you do still only need one piece of that. We'll cut it just a little bit different so you can get eight pieces from that. For my pattern papers today, I chose two pieces from the Cartabella Home Again collection. I chose the floral and then this striped, I don't know if that's called plaid, kind of looking paper um, for my second one. Now, I will be adding a sentiment later and probably some dies to cut that. I'm just not sure yet what I'll be using, but as I go along in the process video, I will let you know of any other tools or products I bring in. And if I do leave you with any questions, you can always leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty. To get started today, I'm going to be cutting the pattern papers and this is where I stray from those original instructions. I will be cutting four of each of the pattern paper pieces from each of those two pattern papers instead of cutting six of one from the first one and six of the other size from the second. So I do need to cut off the branding strip before I get started. This is always a good thing to do if your pattern paper has a right or wrong way. Now mine doesn't but I did just want to show you that. The first thing I'm going to do is cut a strip from the pattern paper that is five and a quarter inches wide. Then I rotate the other piece and cut it to four inches tall and cut it to the same five and a quarter inch wide as that first strip. 
Now I'm going to need four pieces that are that same size. Now I do have specific dimensions on the printable for each of the pattern paper pieces. So if you need to refresh those, you can download that and I'll tell you to at the end of the video. For the second pieces, I take the part that's left over, cut two strips that are three and a half inches tall, and then I cut those down into pieces that are two and a quarter inches wide. I keep cutting until I have four of those, just like with the first piece, and then once those eight pieces are cut, I bring in that second piece of pattern paper and make those exact same cuts. Next, I brought in just a scrap of white cardstock and I cut this down to a final size of two and a quarter inches wide by three and a half inches tall. And I will come back to this in just a little bit, but for now, let's go ahead and cut down some craft cardstock. I will be cutting this to two and a half inches wide by three and three quarters inches tall. Now originally it only called for six pieces, but today I will be cutting this down to eight. So I make two strips that are three and a half inches tall. And then with that final piece left, I cut it down to two pieces that are the same final size as CS1B. These pieces will end up being the mat for the smaller pattern paper piece. And you'll see here that when I align that at the top of this, there is extra room on the bottom. It does have a larger border. That is just so when you cut it down later, you have a little bit of wiggle room for your cutting. Now I'm going to bring back in that piece of white cardstock and we're going to make this a cutting template. Now this is two and a quarter inches wide. So what I do is center this between the one and one eighth inch mark to both sides of my cut line. And I make a little mark where you can see my cutting blade will cut. Then I'm going to rotate it and use the side ruler and I'm going to make a mark that is one half inch up from the bottom of each side. After you've made all three of those marks, this is what it will look like. To cut it down, I just line up two of the marks with the cut line on my trimmer and make the slice. And then once I have the first one, I flip it around and do the same for the second. Now you could always just use a pair of scissors for this and just cut from point to point on each side. Now make sure you hold on to this for any future sets you make with this sheet load. Once that template is all ready, you'll bring back in your smaller pieces of pattern paper, align the template to one end, and then bring in your scissors and just cut right along that white cardstock piece. And now this just ensures that each time your angle is correct and nicely centered. Now don't forget, if you are a channel member, you can kind of skip this last couple parts because I do have today going up on the community tab a free SVG file if you want to use your electronic cutter or a free PDF if you want to print it out on cardstock and just cut that down with your trimmer for a template. If you're not already a channel member and you want to know more about the perks, I do have a link at the top of the description box below. Next, we're going to bring back in those small pieces of craft cardstock and we will cut these to be the mat for the pattern paper pieces. After you add adhesive to the back of the small piece, you're going to align this at the top center of the craft cardstock piece. You'll have about an eighth of an inch border on the left and right and then some excess on the end for trimming down. Now I just eyeballed all of these and I just tried to cut so I would have an even border all the way around. But once again, if you are a channel member, I will have that file for you to use up later today on the community tab. I did the rest of these in more of an assembly line process. I placed each pattern paper onto the craft cardstock, and then once all those had been adhered down, I brought in my scissors and I cut the borders on all of them. 
After those were done, I brought in my card bases and the large pieces of pattern paper and I placed one of the pattern papers centered on the front of each of those card bases. Then I brought back in the flags that we just finished cutting and adhered these to the cards. Now this will get aligned to the top of the card base, not the top of the pattern paper, and you can adjust it however you want left to right depending on the width of your sentiment. Now also, if you wanted to, you could align this with the top of the pattern paper piece. You could also rotate this sketch and make it so it's a portrait card. With sheet load, it's always kind of like a jumping off point and you can always make everything your own. For my sentiment strip, I chose this die cut from my stash. The inner part of it fits nicely across the banner on the front of the card. I will be using the Have a Great Day sentiment from this CC Design stamp set. My sister gifted this to me. I'll see if it's still available and if so, I'll link it in that description box below. I will be hand stamping my sentiment today, so I brought in my Sizzix mat for a little cushioning underneath my cardstock, and I will be using Gina K Designs in the navy ink. I thought this went well with some of the blue in the pattern paper. Now normally I would use my Misty when I had this amount of sentiments to stamp, but because they don't get set up in the same exact place on each of these pieces of cardstock, it was just quicker and easier to do this by hand because some of these I only stamp on once and the others I do stamp on twice. Once those were all stamped, I then took all of these off screen and I cut them out with my die. Also off screen, I die cut eight vellum kind of branchy pieces for a little extra accent on my card. Now we're gonna finish these up. What I'm gonna do is use art glitter glue to adhere my vellum down. You'll see here that I kind of put some on the stem and a dot on each leaf. Now I will tell you if I had this to do over again, I would probably use a sponge with my adhesive because the dots of glue were pretty, um, easy to see on the final dried cards. But I went ahead and just put adhesive on the back and then I set these off to the side to dry for about five minutes underneath a stamp block. After those had dried, I brought in my ATG and I added a sentiment to each of the card fronts. Now this would be a great time where if you wanted to, you could pop this up with some foam tape, but I'm just trying to keep these as flat as possible. The items that will kind of stick up off the card are my confetti pieces from this confetti mix from Cartwright Sequins. I don't have any affiliation with them, but I will link this in the description box below. I really love the sparkle and how there's no hole in the center and they are pretty flat overall. To get these onto the card, I place three mini glue dots with my scissors where I want the pieces to go. And then I use my jewel picker to place the confetti pieces onto the glue dots. I ended up using a large, a medium, and a small on each card front. The mix does have those three different sizes. And I just finished these until all of the cards had a little bit of sparkle. I have been trying lately to use up the scraps while I can. So I brought in the pieces that were left over from cutting down the pattern papers and I cut these into strips that were one half inch wide by three and a half inches tall. I cut eight of each pattern and then I brought in, I think this is called the pick a banners punch. I will link it in the description box below, but it has a fishtail end and a reverse fishtail. And I punch it with the reverse fishtail. And then I added two pieces to the inside left of each card. I did cut down that second piece to be a little bit shorter, just so there was some variation in height. I continued adding the pieces until all eight cards had decoration on the inside. And here's a look at the final cards.
I hope you enjoyed seeing how I made the cards today and those little changes I made to get a set of eight cards. Now, if you want to download the August 2019 sheet load of cards, down in the description box below, right above my product list, is a link to the PDF. Now, it will say below that to watch the video to get a password, but your password is watching to this point to find out where that link is. Now, if you're a channel member, later today over on our community tab, I will have a link to the SVG file and the PDF of the flag shape. If you did enjoy the video, a thumbs up is always appreciated. And until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.